tuning in to What's Up Watchtower. Um, we've been on hiatus for a couple of months and we haven't been able to stick to our goal of making one video per month. Uh, we've both been traveling. I've been traveling for work and he's been traveling. Michael has been traveling for paintball. In fact, he's out of town this weekend playing a tournament in Dallas, Texas. And um, anyways, I just had um, some some things on my mind, on my heart, that I wanted to talk about. And I know this is a subject matter that is probably very triggering for many of you. And um, But, you know, I have some things going on in my personal life right now that have prompted me to want to make this video and talk about the issue of shunning and how it tears families apart how it affects everyone involved. And, um, you know, I'm gonna try to do as minimal editing as I can because today is May the 3rd. I really wanna get this up by tomorrow, May the 4th. Um, and I'll explain why. But, um, you know, I don't have a lot of time to, to make these videos, but this is, in my life right now, something very important. So, um, like I said, today is May the 3rd, and tomorrow my oldest niece is getting married. And, of course, I wasn't invited to the wedding, and um, it's, it's kind of heartbreaking that this is how it is. And I'm just gonna put in right here um, a video that many of you ex-Jehovah's Witnesses are very familiar with. I'm just going to put a clip in here. It's uh, I'm going to have to read what it says. It's a, a clip from the Supreme Court of Canada case on November 2nd, 2017, involving the Jehovah's Witness organization versus Randy Wall. Um, so Randy Wall was uh, suing the Watchtower for uh, basically, he, he lost a lot of uh, his customers and his, hurt his income when he was disfellowshipped. And um, so what the Watchtower lawyer says here about shunning and uh, what he says is, as we know, a complete lie. So I'm just going to insert that here for those of you who may not have seen it or to refresh your memory. And the congregation elders took the decision to disfellowship him. That word is used by Jehovah's Witnesses. They, Jehovah's Witnesses don't use the word shun or shunning. They refer to it as disfellowship, disfellowshipping, disfellowshipped. Because that really gives the, the, the sense of what's taking place within this particular religious community. Disfellowship literally means no further spiritual fellowship with the, with the individual. And as I point out, Sorry, Chief Justice. As I point out at paragraph 22 of my factum, the, the nature of the relationship then of a disfellowship person is not completely shunned. The disfellowship person is able to come into the congregation, to the congregation meetings, they're able to attend uh, in the kingdom hall of Jehovah's Witnesses, they're able to sit wherever they like, they can sing the, the spiritual songs with the congregation. As far as their family members are concerned, Normal family relations continue with the exception of spiritual fellowship. So as you will have seen, he claims that when a person is disfellowshipped, that normal family relations would continue, that it only was a, uh, a spiritual matter, uh, in spiritual matters that they would not associate with um, the congregation or their family. Well, Mike and I have not been disfellowshipped. We have not technically even been disassociated because we just made a video. We didn't send in a letter. And um, as far as I know uh, from sources that I have, nothing was ever announced in the congregation. I may be wrong about that, but as far as I know, because if they were going to disfellowship us, which is what they would have had to have done, they would have had to send us a letter stating to meet them at the, you know, at an appointed time for a judicial hearing. That never happened. And then if they had 
chosen to disfellowship us, we would have received a letter that we were being disfellowshipped for causing dissensions or for apostasy or whatever it may have been. That never happened. And since we never formally sent a letter in because we don't feel like we owe them anything. We just wanted to walk away from it and use our voices to spread um, hope to those who are leaving, who have woken up, that it gets better and um, that you can move on with your life. We also wanted to use our voice to um, talk about the child abuse, the sexual abuse of children that has been ongoing and that has not been properly dealt with inside this organization. So there, there was many factors that prompted us to start making videos that was all for the intention of helping people. And um, we felt that we were helped by other people's videos and we just felt an obligation to, to help others by sharing our story and sharing our point of view and sharing information um, that we might be able to reach people that wouldn't have been reached by other YouTube channels. And um, that was, you know, three over three years ago. And there's, you know, obviously a lot more YouTube channels now, um, thankfully, that are um, spreading the word. But, um, you know, if they have a right to go knock on people's doors and bother people, then we have a right, too, to share our story and share our voice and spread truth as well. And um, so that was our motivation. And we've talked about this in other videos. But, you know, the fact that we've never formally been disfellowshipped and we've never formally disassociated but we're still being shunned and what makes this particularly um, just two sets of standards it's a double standard and it's hypocritical is that I have um, a non Jehovah's Witness family member my aunt who is my mother's older sister who was invited and who's there now and going to be there for the wedding. And she's my only non-Jehovah's Witness family member other than my cousins on my dad's side, um, who I, I, have a little, I have some contact with. But, um, you know, the fact that she's treated as part of the family. She's welcomed into the family. She doesn't share their beliefs. And um, what I wanted to share about this is how this has affected her. She's 84 years old and for many years, for my whole life, she didn't really know the beliefs of Jehovah's Witnesses and, you know, she, she just figured, you know, it was another Christian denomination that they probably believed similarly to most Christian denominations. And it didn't seem harmful to her, you know, what we believed and seemed like we had a happy family life. And so every since, you know, we started making YouTube videos, I, I knew that eventually my family would discover. I knew it would come out. This is not the kind of thing that can generally uh, go unnoticed, especially when at the time, when we started making videos, if you Googled or you know went on YouTube and searched Jehovah's Witnesses, we were one of the first videos that were coming up at the time. So I was just like, well, they're, they're going to eventually find out. Someone's gonna see it and rat us out, basically. So I started preparing her and I started explaining to her um, more about Jehovah's Witnesses' beliefs. And she had no idea and it was shocking to her. And she would say to me, surely, you know, your parents aren't going to shun you. I just, you know, that's not how our parents raised us. You know, your mother wasn't raised that way. And, you know, her parents, our parents never shunned her when she became a Jehovah's Witness. Why would they do that to you when you've essentially done the exact same thing that she did by leaving her religion that she was raised in? 
And I said, you don't understand, but I'm going to try to explain to you exactly what they believe and why they're going to shun us. And um, I prepared her for that. She didn't believe it was gonna happen, but it did. And now, this is three years later, three years since we've been shunned by our family, and she's, when she was younger, she was very outspoken. She was actually a lot more like me. But as she's gotten older and she has less years ahead of her, it's too hard for her to say something because she's afraid that they're going to shun her and that she's going to lose the only family she has left in the last years of her life. And she, we were on the phone on Sunday and she just broke down crying and said she wished that she hadn't lived to see this happen in her family. And that just broke my heart because it's so wrong and they just, they don't see it. And it's like, and I've heard this, you know, from other family members too, like my cousins and, um, you know, when I used to have contact with my brother-in-law and, you know, a few, there's a couple others, you know, that I have talked to through the years, but it's like, it's not even like we're dead. It's like we never existed at all. They just, they don't talk about us at all. And it's so bizarre and hurtful. And it's got to be hurting them too. Like psychologically, that is just horrible. It's just horrible. And this religion is so devastating to people. And I'm so grateful that Lloyd Evans and Cliff Henderson and that whole crew is making a documentary, The Truth About the Truth. Um, I just watched a, a, an update video while they're on the road filming. And I'm so grateful to people like Leah Remini who made uh, her show about Scientology but featured the special on Jehovah's Witnesses back in November and how shunning kills. And the suicides are so high among people who are disfellowshipped and being shunned that it, it's, it really needs national attention. And they don't realize, and if I wasn't a stronger person than I am, then there's a possibility I could have taken my life. Because I've had some really low days, but I have Mike. And, you know, it was the fear of losing them and being shunned when I was younger, teenage years, early 20s, when I wanted to leave this religion, that was causing me suicidal thoughts, that I couldn't handle it. But I'm a strong woman, and I'm thankful that I've been able to build a social network that is supportive of what I'm going through, and that I have Mike, you know, that is supportive, and understands what what we're going through so I just you know wanted to make this video I mean I love my niece and she's marrying a Jehovah's Witness she recently got baptized she was in her 20 early 20s and I think the only reason she probably got baptized is so she could marry this brother my other niece who is 19 who confessed to me a year and a half ago that she didn't believe in this religion. She came and stayed with me for two weeks against my sister's wishes, but um, we had a lovely time when she was here and she celebrated her first Christmas with us and um, went home and I, I really don't know what happened, if it was the pressure of 
her family, but she started shunning me again after she left. I never shared that story on this channel because I was, you know, I didn't want, I'm not trying to shame anybody. It's, it's what happened. Um, but, you know, some of you who follow me on Facebook might have seen that my niece was here and, you know, she said she didn't believe in this religion and she wanted to, you know, get out of it. And But her life choices are very limited because of how she's been raised. Um, very little education and no options. And, you know, the pressure from her family to stay in it, I'm sure, has been a factor for why she began shunning me again and um, now my aunt has told me that she is marrying a brother in September and that she's getting baptized in two weeks and I just think this is a horrible horrible mistake a horrible mistake that she is going to regret and that I can it's a train wreck that I can't stop and I wish there was something that I could do to stop it, to help them wake up and see how damaging this religion has been to our family. And they're going to say that it's damaging because I left it. But those that are in it, they're not happy. They're not happy. And... You know, I don't know what's going to happen with my nephews and nieces, you know, as they get older, if some of them will start to wake up. But, you know, now that they've formed a dedication to the organization, once that baptism happens, there's no way to leave without losing your family. So, I just, I, I'm, I'm very sad. I'm very sad that this is three years later and they're still shunning us. I thought that they would have come to their senses and maybe realized that we've, what we've said about the child abuse and other issues that we've been telling the truth, that we've been telling the truth about you know, that their doctrines are wrong, that it's provable that their doctrines are wrong. And I don't know that, I mean, at the very least, you can keep your beliefs. That's fine. You, you can believe whatever you want to believe, but so can we. And I don't have to talk to you about religion. I don't have to try to persuade you to leave. I, I don't need you to leave to have a relationship with you. I, you know, I just need you not to push your beliefs on me. And I won't push my whatever I think on you. And we can just love each other as family. And, you know thinking about the things that my aunt was saying last weekend and how she just broke down and, you know, we'll never have a family dinner together as the whole family again. And it's just really sad. And my parents are getting older and they don't have a lot of years ahead of them. And their family is fractured it's not just us. They don't have a relationship with their grandkids. They really don't. And I saw that even before the shunning started. And from what I've heard now, they, they don't. And they're just, they've become just very hypercritical and complaining and they don't have friends in the congregation. And I remember them complaining about when they would come to Georgia, because they go up there for the summer, that nobody would call them from the congregation down here in Florida and check on them. And that they weren't invited to do things. And 
There's a reason. Take a look at yourselves. There's a reason why your family is so fractured and unhappy. And I just wish I could help them wake up. And I know I can't. And I know so many of you who are going to watch this understand what I'm saying. I'm sorry I'm so emotional, but you get it. I know you get it. And you, you've you told me that you understand and that you're going through the same things. And, you know, I just want our family to be able to come back together. And I hope it happens someday. That's all I can hope. But I just wanted to make this video to talk about the effects of shunning because it's it's just it's just devastating it really is and I know that we try to keep our videos very positive and you know I am going to end on a positive note I'm going to give you a couple of updates so let's get the tears out of here um, <laughs> on positive note Mike has made it onto a pro professional a pro paintball team so congratulations to him and he will be competing professionally around the country in the upcoming months um he's on a like a i forget like division four or something team that he's with right now out in dallas um and they're competing in the rain <laughs> so um anyways that's what he's doing and He's, uh, his headband business, Charm City Paintball, is just like going crazy. He, he can't even keep up with the demand, so that's what he's busy doing on top of his regular job. My job has been very good um, as far as, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a fashion designer, so I design private label for several companies, and I've been traveling um, around the country doing you know making my presentations for the customers and all of that is going very well and um, I'm just super busy with that but I'm, you know when I'm not at work I'm doing improv and I'm on several improv teams and tomorrow night I guess it's the silver lining May the 4th even though my niece is getting married and I won't be there um, my uh, our, we're, we're, my improv team we have a, a show tomorrow night at our theater and it's uh, definitely a Star Wars theme may the fourth be with you <laughs> so it's a Star Wars prom I guess is the theme and we're all dressing up so that should be pretty fun I'm looking forward to that so anyways everything is good in our lives you know I know that I showed some emotion in this video and uh, I hope I didn't trigger too many of you but I know you get it and uh, just want you guys to know that things are good with us and um, we're looking forward to making more videos as we have time and you know we're always talking about topics that we need to bring up in videos but it's just a matter of finding the time and um, anyways just want to say thank you for those of you who have supported us and um, we really appreciate all of your comments and um, when you've con reached out to contact us and uh, we, we feel your love and uh, we love you guys too so uh, take care and until next time